Hello. Go ahead and open up your math notebook to the next available page and write the title of today's math lesson, which is multiply decimals by powers of 10. Multiply decimals by powers of 10. So, real quick, before we get into some examples, let's review what powers of 10 are. Power of 10 is any number <clears throat> that starts with 1 and ends in 1 or more zeros. So, 10 is a power of 10. Also, 100 is a power of 10. Also, 1,000 is a power of 10. Also, 10,000 is a power of 10. And I think you get the point. 100,000 is a power of 10. And so on. It's anytime it starts with a one and ends in one or more zeros, that number is a power of 10. And powers of 10 can be expressed this way, or they can be expressed this way. We could write 10 as 10 to the first power, to the power of one. Or 100, we could write as 10 to the second power, because it's 10 times 10. Or 1,000, we could write as, and remember, we also say 10 to the second power, 10 squared. You know, and 1,000, we could write as 10 to the third power, or 10 cubed. And 10,000, we could write as 10 to the fourth power. So these are all equal to each other. We could write as 10 to the fourth power. Okay, so that's what a power of 10 is. Any number that starts with one and ends in zeros. And it can also be written this way as an actual power. 10 to the fourth power is 10,000. 10 to the third power or 10 cubed is 1,000. 10 squared or 10 to the second power is 100. And 10 to the first power is 10. Now, how do we multiply decimals by power of 10? By powers of 10? Well, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how easy you'll find today's lesson. Let's do an example together. Let's say we have three and 61 hundredths times, pick any power of 10, let's say 100. All you have to do is count how many zeros there are in the power of 10 and move the decimal point over to the right that many times. So check this out. Three and 61 hundredths times 100. Write the same digits. The decimal point was right here. It moves over. There's one, two zeros in a hundred. So it moves over one, two times and it goes right here. So the answer is now you could put a zero here and it would be 361 and zero tenths, but that's the same thing as just writing 361. So the answer is just 361. Okay, let's do another example together. Let's say we have one and 72 hundredths times, let's say this time, let's make it times 10. So there's one zero in 10. So you'd move the decimal point over to the right one time. So in the answer, it would be right there. So the answer would be 17 and two tenths. The decimal point was right here. It hops over one time to the right because there's one zero in this power of 10. Let's do another example together. Let's say we have 853 thousandths times 10 to the fourth power. Now, when you see it like this, you don't count the zeros. When it's written as a power, in, in, instead of counting zeros, you just move it over to the right the amount of times shown by the exponent. So here, this is what it was with the decimal point right here. We just move it over to the right four times because it's to the fourth power. So one, two, three, four, and the decimal point goes right here. And anywhere there's an empty pocket, you just put a zero there. So this means the answer would be 8,530.
because see the decimal point goes right here. It's to the right of the ones place, to the zeros in the ones place. And since there's nothing to the right of the decimal point, we don't even need to show the decimal point in the answer. It's just 8,530. So basically this whole lesson is either count the number of zeros in the power of 10 and move the decimal point over that many times to the right, or whatever number is shown by the exponent, move the decimal point over that many, that many times to the right. Let's do another example. Let's say we have 78 hundredths times 10 to the second power. That's a two. 10 squared is 10 to the second power, so that's a two. So we move the decimal point over two times. So this is what it did look like. The decimal point was right here. We move the decimal point over to the right two times, one, two, and now it's right here. And so the answer is just 78 because the decimal point is to the right of the ones place. So the answer is 78. Let's do another example. Let's do seven. 76 and 5 tenths times 1,000. All you have to do is move the decimal point over to the right one, two, three times. So this is what we had before. The decimal point was right here. And we move it over one, two, three times. One, two, three. So the decimal point goes right here. And wherever there's empty pockets, we put zeros. So the answer is... 76,500. 76,500. Okay, let's do a few more examples together. Uh, let's say we have 81 hundredths times 10. There's one zero and 10, so we move the decimal point over one place to the right. The decimal point was here. We move it over one place to the right, and it ends up here. So this 8 is now in the 1's place. We can drop this 0 in the 10's place now. And the answer is 8 and 1 tenth. Let's do another one. Let's say we had 1 and 23 hundredths times 100. You just move the decimal point over to the right one, two times because there's two zeros in 100. So the decimal point was here. You move it over one, two times, and now it's right here. And the answer is 123. Is this making sense to you guys? I hope it is. Let's do another one. Let's say we have 93 hundredths times 10. Okay, there's one zero and 10. So the decimal point was right here. We move it over to the right one time because there's one zero and 10 and the answer is nine and three tenths. All right, well, hopefully you're starting to get the hang of this. You just move the decimal point over to the right the, the, the same amount of times as there are zeros in the power of 10 or the, or the amount of times shown by the exponent. Now I'm going to give you some independent work. I'm going to give you two problems to do independently. Do one and 23 thousandths times 100. And do 853 thousandths times 10. Go ahead and do those two problems for your independent practice. And then click on the video attached underneath this one to see if you did them right. I will catch you next time. Signing off.